everyone, and welcome to iReddit, bringing you your daily dose of the internet for Wednesday, May 10th, 2017. I am Michael Schwann. And I'm Nathan Wood. Please remember, everyone, you can help support our show by going to patreon.com slash daily internet. Once again, that is patreon.com slash daily internet. Nathan, how are you doing today? Pissed. <laughs> Why are you pissed? That stupid fucking game, Heroes of the Storm. I hate it so much. And they force you to play it to get everything good and over not everything good, but Overwatch stuff, and I hate it so much. You know, it's funny because when it comes to Heroes of the Storm, I have only heard two opinions. Either, no, I enjoy it, or it's an absolute piece of trash. Like, there doesn't really seem to be any in between of like, no, it's okay. No, I only hear, I play it and I enjoy it, or it's one of the worst damn MOBAs that's been ever created. To be fair, I really hate MOBAs. And just in general? Yeah, just in general. How come? Uh, oh, I realized my- oh shit! My everything's still kind of fucked up. Good job. Um, I- I don't like the communities, how salty they are, and on top of that, the game makes me salty, and I don't like being that angry at a stupid fucking game because I can't do anything to help myself because it's relying so much on a team. And the teams are rando, and they suck balls. That's fair. It, is Overwatch that different, though? Or is it because the, there is a level of, like, power that you have as an individual in Overwatch, where MOBAs, that's not really the case? I'm also a lot better at first-person shooters than MOBAs. That's fair. Um... I don't know what I'm actually considered good at, so... I, I'm good at RPGs! <laughs> I'm good at, um, strategy games that aren't real-time. Oh, like, like, tactics? Like, like, Final Fantasy Tactics or, uh, mm -hmm. uh just anything, yeah. Even turn-based RPGs. Sure. So, how was your day, though, aside from shitty Heroes of the Storm? Oh, speaking of, I, 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 I don't know if I'll ever play that stupid game, but just in case anyone ever does, no one's telling anybody this, but if you... Play or might possibly play. Here's the storm is free. Log in and get free 20, 20 heroes for free. Yeah, yeah, just, you get just, just go do it. Like if, if you if you're in video games at all, go and you think you might ever play Heroes of the Storm, or you used to play, and you're like, ah, just just go do it. Like you will if it, it'll take you ten minutes to go do at maximum. And if you ever return or ever start playing the game, you'll have a good start. What did, what did you pick? I have not logged in to do it yet. It, that okay. is also a pseudo reminder to myself to do so. I picked Flex. Um, I will pick whichever one I own the, le the least amount of people in. See, that for me was uh, Assassins, but Assassins had one less than Flex, and I like the the champion or the heroes in Flex more. I will also that probably being said, pick whichever one has Tracer in it. Uh, I don't I don't know if any of them have Tracer. Fuck, Maybe I don't give a shit then. Yeah, I know a couple of them has Zarya in it. I even think there's a Lucio in the support one. I don't know. I don't care. Did you see that um, uh, Diva is going to be the next uh, hero in Heroes of the Storm? Uh, Her ex and Genji? Aren't they supposed Genji's, Genji's already in. Diva's the next one, right? Sure, okay. Her ex her explosion, her mech explosion, is not her ultimate. No? Okay. Yeah. It's really weird. Anyway, shall we get into some new stuffs? Sure. And... You know, get on to things that people might want to hear us talk about instead of video mm. games. Mm. No, we're going to sit here. We're in, we're a video game podcast now, guys. The news show just spends an hour talking about video games. About being angry at them because they're awful. <laughs> All right. Ted. Tesla releases details of its solar roof tiles, and they are cheaper than regular roof with an infinity warranty and 30 years of solar power. This was submitted by Jaybird221 to Our Futurology. So... They're, they're kind of cheaper than actual roof tiles. So the, you, you can order these now. You can get it. You can get, buy them. They're, it, they're available in the United States. If you live outside of the United States, then expect at least a year before they actually like are brought to you to install. Now, the way that this works is that they, based on your house design and your location, Tesla has, has this like algorithm to say how much of your house actually needs solar panels on it 
because they don't do 100%. The maximum they do on a house is 70%. But for the most part, most houses need more along, more along the lines of 40% solar tiles and the rest being just regular tiles. But they all look the same so it has a nice sleek look, right? Because people care about aesthetics way too much. Now, the non-solar tiles are cheaper than regular roof tiles. With regular roof tiles being around twelve to fifteen dollars per square foot, the non-solar Tesla tiles being about ten dollars per square foot, the solar tiles are roughly forty-two dollars per square foot. But they are using the idea that the solar tiles save you money as a way to argue that they are cheaper. I, you know, it's on the whole probably cheaper. It's a it's more of an initial investment, and that's what people are too afraid of. They're too afraid of to they're too afraid to initially invest because they're afraid their money is just going to fall. Well, here's the problem. But with, but with something like this, like your your money's not going to fail you. Well, and the other problem was is that like it's not even that I am scared of the initial investment. It's that I did I can't afford the initial investment. That's also a fair point. A lot of people are really fucking poor right now, but if you can afford the initial investment, you definitely should. Because the average cost to have this installed, in which if you order a roof from Tesla, a solar-powered roof, they will come to your house, remove your old roof, and put a new one on that is all the solar shit, right? Mm -hmm. All in one. It's all in one package. It's not like you have to figure out how to install it yourself or pay some third party. You know, Tesla comes, removes your roof, puts your new one on, says have a good day. The average cost for these roofs is 50 grand that's kind of a huge investment that guys. yeah see exactly that's a fucking lot now like it the estimation is that after 30 years it will have completely paid itself off but one that's 30 years and two that means that you have to have 50 grand to just be like plop there you go well okay so if your house is a familial house and you know it's going to be in your family line for, for a long time, go ahead and do it. Well, and I, I could also see if, like, because more and more people are just having new houses built, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's like, okay, instead of buying a house, we will just build a house. Because often if you pay, like, a, a contractor to build you a house, to buy, build the house you want, it can often be cheaper than buying one that might not be what you want. Right. And so, or, or, or at least very close to being equivalent in terms of price. Mm -hmm. And so lots and lots of people are just having their houses built and they get a mortgage from the, the bank the same way as if you were buying a house, just instead the bank goes, oh, you're going to have it built? Sweet. I think instead of trying, and we, we will need a lot of people to put these on old houses, I think instead it's easier to just keep on looking to have them installed on new ones. Yeah, and you know, progressing the technology to be cheaper. Yeah. So, I mean, it's cool, though. It's available. It's out right now. This isn't like the technology of the future. No, this is now. This is here. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we'll see what happens. I mean, I hope that a lot of people jump on the ball for this because, one, Tesla needs the money. Like, Tesla is very valuable, but they have never made profit on anything because they're just the, the future company. And I would really like all the cool shit that they're trying to do to succeed, but they have to have people that actually put some level of faith in that for them to succeed. Uh, that that That's what we need more of. If, if people can blindly put their faith in some guy who's sitting in the clouds telling you that you should be good, then people should be able to put faith in other people. That's very rare, though. I know, and it's really unfortunate. Like, I'll admit, I even have problems with that. Yeah, I, I can very well admit that, too. Like, that being said, there, there are some things that, that you just, it, it goes beyond, you, you have to put faith in. Like, progressing humanity via, you know, things like renewable energy. Right. That just needs to be a thing. Right. No, completely agree. And it's super important. We just need to get there. The, and I, I know we will. It's just a matter of if we will get there soon enough. Because mm -hmm. there's so much damage that is irreversible that is already happening that I just don't know if we will achieve those things in a quick enough fashion. I, yeah, I'm pretty sad about, about what we do to our planet. Yeah. Oh, shit. I forgot to read this one. <laughs> Damn it.
because it didn't pull up earlier, and uh, so I realized I never came back around to read it. So uh, we'll just have to wing it. Yeah. Nine. Senator wants to hire Comey to lead Senate probe. This was submitted by Abdullah to our politics. Please have text here that I can read. Um. Oh, okay, so what this is, is that, so we talked yesterday about the FBI director, uh, James Comey, being terminated by the President Donald Trump. So, Senator Angus King, he is floating the idea to hire James Comey for the Senate's investigatory division. And he's independent, right? Uh, he's Maine, isn't he? Yes, he is independent. Yeah. And he is part of the Select Committee on Intelligence, which is just the Senate's version of the FBI for the Senate's matters. So they like Comey and were considering trying to figure out if they could just hire him to lead the Senate committee. Sure. So, I mean... I mean, they're going to be facing a lot of opposition. Well, and that's the thing is there's so many people being so heavily criticized right now that they – because, like, so many people have flip-flopped on it based on the events that have happened, whether it's, like, the stuff with, you know, like, people saying that, like, you know, I like him, I like fire him, I like Comey him. Fire Comey because of, of Hillary's emails and then fire Comey because he's – Digging too much into Trump's Russia ties. Well, there's people like, oh, you know, we should fire Comey because of the email stuff. And then those same people are, you know, saying, ah, this is shady because you fired Comey when he started investigating the Russia stuff. And it's like, you wanted this guy fired. It's like, well, I wanted him fired when he was doing bad shit to my party. Which is I, really what it is every time. Is people I feel like it was less... It was less fire him for digging into Hillary's... Uh, emails and more fire him for talking about digging into Hillary's emails so close to an election that it possibly swayed the election. Oh, for the most part, it's genuinely proven that it swayed the election. Ex exactly. Like the polls immediately showed a change and those polls showed the largest change in the swing states that Trump won. Right. So now that said, it... <sighs> Here's the thing, right, is that no matter your job, you will make mistakes. Some of them will be small, but I guarantee you through any job you do, you will have at least one major fuck-up. This guy's was getting uh, Trump elected. <laughs> well, I wouldn't necessarily have to say that it is his fault that Trump got elected because no, there's a the lot. Russians, right? Sure, maybe, whatever. There's a lot it's more The Russians and 4chan. Definitely 4chan. We, you can blame everything, everything on 4chan. Everything on 4chan. So, the thing is, though, is that he wasn't fired then and there, right? Mm -hmm. And, like, a lot of people expected Trump to fire Comey as soon as Trump came into office or as soon as Jeff Sessions was appointed as attorney general. Neither of those things happened. Instead, he was fired mere hours after requesting money to go deeper into the investigation of Russian Trump's campaign and Russian ties. And so that's what makes it look super sketchy because like if the whole email thing came out and Obama was like, sorry, dude, got to let you go. That was a fuck up on your end. Understandable. But after that, when he is just returned to the cycle of normal work and then you let him go, now you just look sketchy. And if you're not punishing him for that fuck up that he committed during the 2016 election and like, you know, slap on the wrist bad and you made him move on, you know. If he's still getting to do his job, and he's doing a good job, he just, uh, he honestly, he, even in the Hillary thing, he was doing a good job. The thing that he made the mistake of was talking about it, because right. the director of the FBI shouldn't be doing press conferences. That's not his job. No. And so that was the mistake. Not that he did the investigation wrong or anything like that. It was that he talked about it when he necessarily shouldn't have. But if you're not holding him accountable for that, then... This is just a very awkward out there time to terminate them. Because he was still a damn good director for the FBI. Yeah, I I don't know too much about him, honestly, other than what's been brought up recently. So, Excuse I mean, me. he seemed... It's the second ever director of the FBI to have been fired. Who was the first one? I don't remember exactly. I'll pull it up. Wasn't it uh, the the dude during Nixon's 
No, I don't, I don't believe he was the director of the FBI. Okay. Well, while you pull that up, shall we move on to the next one? Yeah. Awesome. I'm going to try and get this dropped in here so that I can actually hit the button. Eight. Cop fired after not shooting suicidal man, Sioux City. Ooh. Ooh. This was, uh, this was submitted by D Dig Then Reddit Then to our news. Okay. So the, this officer, his name is Stephen Mater, Matter, M-A-D-E-R, Matt, Matter, Mater, whatever. Oh, it was Bill Clinton's. Okay. So he responded to a, a domestic violence call. Well, it wasn't domestic violence. The, the girlfriend or wife of this person called, said they were having an altercation and that this, he was holding a knife and threatening to hurt himself. Um, the, the deceased name is, um, Ronald J. Williams. Mater responded to the call, arrived. The guy at that point had then went and gotten a pistol from his car. The woman told him that the pistol was not loaded because they had no bullets for it. And he had, the, the, the dude used to be in the military and had been working with difficult people a lot. I mean, between the military and then moving to being a cop. He analyzed the situation and this guy was not exhibiting himself as a threat to anyone but himself. And so instead of, like, because instead of, you know, responding to the weapon, he was responding to this person who was in an emotional crisis and was trying to talk to them, get them to calm down and work them through it. And especially because the the gentleman who has now deceased only said, was, kept on muttering the words, please just shoot me. And he's like, I'm not going to because you are, you, you're, you're just broken. Like you, you are just extremely sad right now. And we need to take you somewhere to get help essentially. And so Mater single-handedly was trying to talk this guy out of a depressive episode, but because the, the situation hadn't been resolved, other officers got called to the scene. And when those other officers arrived, the guy kind of freaked out. And because he had a gun in his hand, those other officers immediately shot and killed him. Then, Officer Mater, because he did not respond with force to a armed suspect, to this dude who was waving a gun around, was then fired for not taking the proper course of action to a dangerous situation. But he had prior knowledge that there was no, that the gun wasn't loaded, right? Yes, but that is just the word of, of somebody. There could have been bullets in the gun. There weren't. Gotcha. But because he did not, because he showed restraint and did not use deadly force, because they've been told, when in doubt, shoot to kill, is what they tell their cops there. And so he didn't do what his, his, his instructions had told him, and instead was like, I'm going to talk to this guy and try to lead this guy away from the situation he's put himself in. And because he chose that course of action... He was terminated, and he is now suing the city for basically just, like, like wrongful termination and encouraging officers to kill people. Mm, yeah, that's, uh, hmm. This is a sticky situation. He, here's the way I see it, right? Mm-hmm. So, he arrived, and at that point, it was only him and this guy, Right? It was only him and Mr. Williams, just just Officer Mater and Mr. Williams, because Mater had told other people, get away, get away. You know, you don't need to be here. You might be making the situation worse. And so it was just him and this dude with an unloaded pistol. Right. If Mater makes the conscious decision to choose to not release bullets out of his firearm and instead take a diplomatic approach... That is the officer's decision. If the officer gets injured because of it, then that's his fault. Right. But instead now, we have a guy that was just having a very hard time putting himself in a dangerous situation that is now dead. Who otherwise might not be. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Andrew Walters in the chat room says, what if he had not shot him and the guy shoots a bystander because he didn't drop him? There was no bystanders around. And also, there was no bullets in the gun. So, 
this is a sticky situation because you have all these what if variables that they're supposed to take into account, but he he theoretically knew what was going on and was trying to stop it. Right. Now the thing is, though, is like the situation is one thing. Is this a situation that you feel the the officer mater should be terminated for? Me personally. Yeah. Me personally, I don't think so. I think he, yes, endangered himself and potentially other officers um, around that time. Um, but at the same time, I all right, so I know it's a little different, right? I've had to work in a course about de-escalating situations after they've gotten to that point where people blow up. Sure. And I feel like if that was taught more, then we might be able to not have to shoot everybody when they pull a gun on you. Well, and here's the other thing on that same vein, though. Like, you know, we're talking about, like, what if he had, you know, injured the cop or something or a bystander? Well, the other thing is, is that if he was an extremely aggressive suspect, then what happens if the cop pulls up, the dude immediately pulls out his gun and pops the cop in the head? Like... Then the cop is just dead, no time to respond because he immediately got shot, and then this guy could still go on to do the same thing. Right. Instead, the... Because of the way he approached the situation and the temperament of the situation, I feel like the cop was in the right to try and, and de-escalate the situation to a point where both parties could could instead leave the situation alive. Well, and... We have cops that get into trouble for killing people in situations that they shouldn't have and often are said they, they go to sensitivity training and then they're put back on the force after six weeks, yet this guy gets completely let go for showing restraint and trying to be more sensitive to a situation than immediately pulling out his gun. It is his life. It is a lot of money they would have to pay in, in life support. Well, not life support, in um, life insurance. I don't think, well, I mean, that would be a problem for the insurance agency, probably not necessarily the police department. Sure. And, I mean, that's a risk anyway, just for being, like, alive. Yeah. So, um, everybody, though, I, I want to hear from all of you. What Do you think that it is acceptable that this guy was terminated? Do you think he was in the right or the wrong when it came to this situation? Um, you can let us know on Twitter at iReditCast or just send us an email, feedback.irid at gmail.com. Um, let's go ahead and uh, move along from shitty situations for shitty things to, who knows, probably more shitty stuff. Seven. McConnell rejects call for special prosecutor. This was submitted by Somali Pirate to our politics. Back to Comey. So Comey was investigating the, the Trump campaign ties to Russia, right? Mm -hmm. So now that Comey's gone, some people are calling on an independent investigator to be brought in uh, to be completely separated from bipartisanship to investigate the, the Trump-Russian fiasco, right? Mm -hmm. Before I go any further, yay or nay? I am actually not a fan. Of bringing in a third party? Yeah. Why? So... The FBI is supposed to be doing this job, right? Yes. And they were doing the job. Yes. Comey's fired. Yes. And what what I fear, what a lot of people fear, is that after someone else has been put into office, that that person's going to stall long enough for it to just not really matter anymore. Mm -hmm. And I don't want that to happen. I sure. don't want people to forget about it. I want it to, to be brought to light. So if you brought in a third party... Someone theoretically who is not tied to either, you know, either party or just he's just a neutral independent party. I feel like that's the best scenario. Sure. And in this case, the reason that McConnell is rejecting a special prosecutor is for a very, very similar reason is he says that they don't feel like they need one because Comey was just the head. He was the face of the department, but he, he is not solo 
doing the full investigation. There are dozens, hundreds of people that work for the FBI that are conducting this investigation. Stop undermining their work and their efforts in this investigation just because Comey was terminated. Right. But this brings in another problem is because he's the head of the FBI. He tells people what to do. If they bring in another person and that person's just like, eh, let's slack on that and, you know, do this other stuff instead, mm-hmm. that still gets pushed aside. So do you feel like they should just not put in a new director for a while then? No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying they should put in a new director or even reinstate Comey. What I'm saying is, yes, we should get the third party. Oh, okay. And so he doesn't believe that they need to do so because they don't feel like it's necessary. It. I feel, and I know I'm just a piece of shit, but I feel it's, it's pretty necessary in this scenario. Well, I mean, you are, are very much of the idea of that there should be, as, as the, the people that are in the decision-making processes should be as unbiased as possible towards everything. Which right. is okay. That's completely understandable because then they don't have motives or, or priors or anything like that to give them a reason to choose one way or another. And they can just look at things on the surface and just say, okay, this is how this should go. Shit. I would be really happy, really fucking happy, if Trump was actually not, you know, had ties to Russia. Because that would mean that, you know, he, he won without Russian help, and you know, that's good for him, right? It's kind of unfortunate because I don't I don't personally care for his administration at the moment. But you'd prefer your president to be less of a shitbag? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Well, and they already came out and basically said that during their investigation, it doesn't look like Trump himself has any true direct ties to Russia. But it's not Trump that they're necessarily looking at. It's Trump's campaign. It's Trump's aides. It's the people that work with and for him. It's people like Michael Flynn. Like, it's like, no, he had very Jared strong. Kushner. Yeah, exactly. People that are very heavily tied and associated to Trump that are not Trump, but have very strong reasons to side with Shit. Russia. Steve Bannon, even. Oh, God, I dislike that man greatly. Yeah, a lot of people do. I don't know many people that do. Like, I, I, I can see both sides of the fence and why so many people were anti-Hillary and pro-Trump, even though I, I still don't believe that people should have voted for Trump, but that's neither here nor there. This, but Bannon, oh my god, that guy is just, get him away from everything. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Ban him. That's... It's a pun! <sighs> yep. You did that. Six. U.S. teacher rips off eight-year-old girl's hijab and is fired. This was submitted 11 hours... Oh, shit. This was submitted by Red Hat Gizmo to our news. Damn it, I missed one. Sorry, my bad. Anyway, so this was a substitute teacher who was teaching in New York. Um, This eight-year-old girl was misbehaving in class, and in which misbehaving is she was sitting in the teacher's chair when she was told it wasn't okay and didn't get out of the chair immediately when she was told to get out of the chair, in which this uh, this 31-year-old dude then walks over and grabs her and pulls her out of the chair and removes her hijab as punishment. It's kind of fucked up. Yeah, yeah, it totally is. They've been yeah. immediately fired. Oh, I, that's completely understandable. Yep. That's not a punishment that you inflict upon people. No, no. And also in school, like... When, okay, so when I was in school, in the backwoods, little backwater-ass fucking God knows where the fuck it is in the world, our teachers punished us like, you know, like fucking capital punishment. But that's not a thing you can do anymore in schools, especially, I'm, I guarantee you, you're not allowed to do it in fucking New York. And so, the way that you punish a kid in school is, is you don't... You, don't touch the kid. Don't, don't, all of this, everything you did, don't do it. Yeah, you just, all of it. you know, start taking away privileges. Send them to the principal's office where their parents will be called and that is dealt with on that end. We know, also, like. No, 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 stay with me, all right? The best way to punish a child is... Well, I guess you shouldn't really be punishing them. You should be talking to them so that they understand, right? But if you're forced to punish them, right, 
which isn't really a thing, but if if you absolutely feel the need, right? Mm-hmm. Start doing something fun or even start cleaning and make sure it seems fun. Have everybody in the classroom start doing it too. And then be like, oh, I'm sorry, you're sitting in my chair. I guess you can't do this fun activity with us. Sucks to suck. That's like with my daughter. A lot of the times, like, you would explain what was wrong and then you'd put her in timeout. And being bored sucks. Like, mm-hmm. having to just sit there and do nothing is... Or I mean, watch other people have fun. Yeah, it's terrible. And they're like, oh, I shouldn't do that again, because this is really lame. Right, and that being said, after she apologizes, fucking, you exclude the kid until they feel the need to apologize. Then they apologize, and you introduce them into the scenario as quickly as possible. You want them to start having fun. You yeah. want them to feel rewarded for apologizing. Yep. And for meaning it. Yeah. Not re- yeah, God damn it. yeah, I'm done with this. All right, moving on. <laughs> Five. Deadpool adult animated TV series coming from Donald Glover. This is submitted by Charlie the Penguin to our television. It's also animated by the guys who did Archer. Yep. It's, so excited. We'll see what happens. I mean, Donald Glover, I can't believe how busy this dude has to be. Like, Donald Glover is in everything right now. Dude, I, but it's great because, you know... Fucking, all right, I remember when I first learned about Donald Glover, right? Nobody knew who he fucking was. I was sitting there on YouTube, bored as fuck, and this fucking hilarious-ass video popped up from these guys who did this sketch comedy group, and this thing was called Bro Rape. And it was about um, meeting bros online, and they're like, hey, you want to chill? You want to throw some Frisbees? Play some Xbox? Drink some Natty Ices? And you go there, and then they... They rape you. That's not okay. Yeah. But the video was hilarious. He was also in a video called The Evolution of the Mad Hatter, where he, um, the the bit was, he was a guy who made top hats for a living, but he did it old school style, so he got lead poisoning and went crazy. I thought it was mercury that they used. Or mercury, I'm sorry, not lead. Mercury poisoning went crazy. And it actually, for a little bit, um, it's kind of sweet. Um, in the video, he's talking to his wife and he calls her Squareface and goes, I love you, Squareface. So for a while there, my previous, uh, my ex-girlfriend, my previous girlfriend, I called her Squareface for the longest while. She was Squareface in my phone. That's endearing, I guess. I, she enjoyed it. Oh, uh, I guess that's what matters. Um, right now, though, they don't know who is going to be voicing Deadpool. If Ryan Reynolds is going to reprise the role in this animated series, don't know. Um, it is going to be on FX, though, for those who are curious. So stay with me. I like Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool. I like Ryan Reynolds as live-action Deadpool. I feel like they should get the guy from the Deadpool video game in because I feel like they really capitalized on Deadpool being more crazy in the video games. That's understandable. Than, I can agree with that, yeah. The, the live-action TV show. So let's scrap that voice onto it again. I'm good with that. I'd be okay with that. The Deadpool because video game was surprisingly be, good. He was supposed to be so much more crazy because he has a bunch of fucking tumors in his head. Oh, yep. Yeah, I'd be alright with that. We'll see what happens, though. Hopefully, we'll yeah. uh, get updates. It's supposed... To, we don't know when it's coming, but because Donald Glover's so fucking busy right now. But, uh... Right yeah. now? Always? Always, yeah. Always. Uh, I, I, can I have this after Rick and Morty Season 3? I'd be alright with that. That would be great. Would Four. Be great. James Comey... Oh, God damn it! <laughs> ...asked to testify before the Senate as a private citizen... This was submitted by Flibbity and Flobbity to our politics. So there was, a, the Senate Intelligence Committee was supposed to assemble in like a week. Um, and that's supposed to be the collection of all of the big minds of the investigator, investigatory agencies, right? Right. So, and the thing is, James Comey's not the director of FBI anymore. So he's not invited to go to that. So he can't speak on any of the cases that were happening or anything like that. So the Senate Intelligence Committee is like, can we just invite him as a private citizen to come and attend and speak on these matters just in his own capacity? Now, I feel like they should very well be able to. And, and then that's what they want to do. They want to bring him in to still co- be part of the discussion since he was so heavily involved with so much of it, even if he's no longer the director of the FBI. Right. 
And now there's not been a response from James Comey or if they're even able to do it in the capacity that they're wanting to, because as a private citizen in this setting, is he still allowed to speak on things from when he was director? So there's some rules that have to be presented and reviewed and see if, and also if he's even willing to do it. I mean, he might just be like, nah, screw you guys, I'm done. Yeah, I, that, and I wouldn't be I wouldn't be angry at him for it. I would be kind of very disappointed because he has a bunch of information that should probably be let loose. But well, and yeah. the the deputy director of the Federal Bureau of Investigations, you know, his right hand man that is now acting as the director for the FBI, he theoretically shouldn't have all that same information that he can present. It's but, true. I don't. I, I mean, it might not be presented as well, or it might just be a bunch of paperwork. We don't know, but they want Comey there to speak. I, I feel like they should be able to. Yeah, I they feel just like they should be able to do. Mm -hmm. They should be able to call anyone, really. Well, as it, a private citizen, in my opinion. Well, the the important thing is, is if he comes as a private citizen, which is what the way he would have to come, because he's no longer, you know, in the capacity no, as the director. Not just not just as a private citizen. He can. Come as you are, as you were, as I I'm want not you to be. You make me sad. Good. <laughs> um, if he's still able to speak on those matters as a private citizen. Okay. Because I imagine that when you're the director of the FBI and you leave, you're not allowed to There's talk about anything. Yeah, there's a lot of non-disclosure bits. Yeah, so I don't, I don't know. Oh yeah, just like Andrew said, gonna guess he is locked into an airtight non-disclosure. Yeah, probably, but they want to see if they can get around that anyway. Yeah. Three. One way to battle for future flooding: stop building on floodplains. This was submitted by Brisket NL to Neutral Lawful uh, to R Not the Onion. So. This I this is this is submitted on R not the onion like it's a joke, right? Because it right. sounds ridiculous. How do you battle future flooding of of uh fucking towns? Well, don't build them in places where it'll flood. Makes sense on the surface and kind of sounds like you're mocking. On people. the surface, Michael? What? In order to it's get in order to get things to stop flooding on the surface. <laughs> This is this is more than just like a scientific study that someone got money for and was like, you know how you fight flooding? You stop right. building things on the floodplains. No, they're actually talking about making it a legal matter of whether you are allowed to build in flood prone areas. I mean if you put all of the measures together to stop flooding happening in your building, like say you're fucking Baba Yaga and you have like you know, wait, 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 chicken legs. wait, 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 who is Baba Yaga? Are you fucking kidding me? No, dude. Haven't you heard the story of the old lady who lives in a house with the uh, chicken legs? No. What? No, it's I an have old not. Russian tale technically, but I, I definitely heard it first when I was growing up. There's this Russian tale about this, this wicked witch named Baba Yaga. And, and she lives in a house. Uh, the house sits on top of chicken legs. Now you go to her house. And she's just like, oh my goodness, you, you're such a strong strapping lad, come in, come in, help this old lady out. And you're like, alright, I'm gonna help this old lady out. And you go in, and then she pushes you into her fucking oven, and she cooks you to eat you. So, it's like Russian Hansel and Gretel? Kind of. Except with chicken legs. Okay, well, um, yeah, okay. So, the idea here is, is that... They are Is that I can't put anything up on that window? That they are considering making legislation to where municipalities cannot build on floodplains. Because municipalities, for the most part, don't care. Because when your town gets flooded, it doesn't cost the city anything. Because it's labeled as a natural disaster, disaster so the federal government pays for the rebuilding. Whereas instead, the municipality just collects money over the initial construction and then future property taxes. So they don't necessarily have to care because they just want more buildings to be built so they collect more money off of the building sitting there. So because this has become such a problem and it costs the federal government almost a billion dollars a year, a year 
to pay oh, for flood damages. They are looking at making it illegal to build in places where it has been, where they would, because I mean, science at this point is like, yeah, it's going to fucking flood right there. Anytime it rains more than four inches and it's like, oh, okay, well build a house there fucking anyway. It doesn't rain that much. They're like, no, 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 you can't, they want to make it where you can't fucking do that anymore. Oh, I'm kind of for that. Yeah. At the same time, I mean, it's, it's kind of shitty because, you know, people, people like living in these weird areas. But at the same, th th all this makes me think of is goddamn Pompeii, right? So in like, what was it, like 28 or 82 or whatever the fuck, BC, volcano goes off, fucking super volcano blows, wipes out Pompeii, everybody dies. Or Venice currently, because Venice is sinking. What do we do? What do we do when we know that there's this volcano that wipes out an entire city? Eh, build a new city right next to the fucking destroyed one. We can have the old city be a tourist attraction. It works. It's like Venice, though, because, like, Venice is actually sinking. A lot of the time, they'll get floodwaters in their buildings because it's just, it's too much. So, here's the thing, though, with Venice. Venice is really old. Did we know that that was going to happen when Venice was being built? No, we didn't expect water levels to rise because that's because of fucking... Ice caps melting and shit. Oh, no, I understand. But, I mean, the thing is, is, like, these, they're saying, you can't build towns where you know the water's gonna come. Well, okay, so technically, yes, they did know about tides and about how to stop that with their gate system. But now there's just too much water. Yeah. Initially, initially they had it, you know, just fine. They... They had built it on the water. It was floating. Whenever there was too much water, they had this gate system that would open up and let the water flow out so that it wouldn't flood. But now there's too much water because of global warming. So what do we do? <laughs> Stop driving your shitty-ass combustion cars. Hey, I have a very decent combustion car. <laughs> Make it electric. I am waiting on the electric car that drives itself. Because if because that's supposed to be out in the next like five years, and if it is, I will fucking immediately go get one. I'm just gonna keep clicking my time. What about you? You don't even have a car. You you ride the disgusting ass combustion bus. Right, and if you look at the amount of emissions per person coming out of a bus compared to if every single one of those people on that bus had a car, then I'm saving the fucking planet. Kinda. It is so much less. Kinda. Mm. It's all bad. Mm. It's just all bad. Mm. It is. If they had a tram, if they had a trolley coming through my neighborhood and picking us up and put everything on a trolley system, you bet your fucking sweet ass I would take that trolley system. The Dude. best I have for public transportation is a bus. And still, buses are scientifically proven better sources for, for transportation when it comes to trying to, to save the environment. Jennifer Cruz in the chat room says, Combustion? It's a pun! I didn't see that. Oh. Well. It's not up in my chat room. Sucks to suck. And sometimes I do ride a bike to work. Sometimes I longboard to work. It's nice in the morning. You're crazy. It's only like 45 minutes. Although, we are so damn spoiled as Alaskans, by the way. But one, we have very intense heat up here in the summer. Not heat. Intense sun. The sun is very intense in the summer. Some and, people would say it's intense heat. Sure. Like my seven-year-old daughter. Friggin', we're driving home from, I pick her up at the fucking Taekwondo, we're heading home, and she's like, oh my god, I'm dying from the heat. And it's, like, 60. Like, yeah, no, she's an Alaskan. Yeah. She's gonna go spend two months this summer in Texas. The kid's gonna melt. And she will start to understand why I melt. Because anything over like seventy for me is intolerable. That's not yeah, true. I like I like it a little warm, but you know, like yeah. I, it's, over seventy is fine. It's once you start to get over like eighty, eighty-five that I start to get uncomfortable. See, I like eighty, nineties, but only in my own home. Oh mm -mm, no, I'm alright. I don't like it outside of my home. It gets too, too hot. Fake anti-net neutrality comments were sent to the FCC using names and addresses of people without their consent. This was submitted by Foam to our technology. So we talked yesterday, and I think even the day before, about the FCC, the net neutrality movement, and how you need to go 
add your name to the comments to tell them how important net neutrality is. Well, people have been reviewing those comments, and there are tens of thousands of comments that are almost all exactly the same. All Someone of, just copy and pasted it. All of them, there, there's more than 58,000 of them, by the way. Over 17,000 of which were just in the last 24 hours, and they all say damn near exactly the same thing. And it's all anti-net neutrality about how it kills jobs and it's, you know, hurting the economy and all this stuff for net neutrality to be a thing. And all of it, and the, like the, the Verge, which is the, the, the reporting source here, they contacted a lot of the people, as many as they could, that had made these comments, and all of them had no idea what they were talking about. Hmm. So somebody is using people's addresses and email addresses to insert fake comments to the FCC forums. But it's to to show that net neutrality is bad? Yes. So they want net neutrality to go away so that they can do whatever the fuck they want with your internet. Right. Bastards. Yep. Fucking actual sons of bitches. Yep. Now, there's no indication yet of who it is. I mean, I... I uh, it's the FCC. No, it doesn't seem to be the FCC. It seems to be a particular... Like, a lot of the language comes directly from a group that has been long anti-net neutrality. Um, mm -hmm. The Center for Individual Freedom, is, and it was part of their 2010 press release. The language is almost verbatim from that press release. And they've, this entire time, I've been very, very against net neutrality. And when they were contacted, they were like, yeah, that's our language. They didn't say that they did it, but they're like, yeah, that's the stuff we've been pre preaching for 10 years now. So, I mean, if we do... It's just like OJ. I didn't do it, but if I did... It's the Masons. It's the Freemasons. Yeah. Like, oh, the Illuminati. Well, and, like, if we do end up getting the FCC logs, I wonder if those logs have information about where these comments have come from. Because I bet you, I bet you, that if you could see, like, the IP addresses of those 58,000 comments that are all the exact same damn thing, I guarantee you they all came from the same fucking place. No, well, you think people are that stupid? They're hiding behind, like, 50 firewalls and some proxies. Okay, so 50,000 comments from five different places. Whatever. Exactly. It's still blatantly obvious. Painful, painfully obvious, even. Putin, your emails to good use. It's God bot. damn it, Jennifer. You liked it. Fucking Shriner. Oh, Andrew. You liked it. Yeah. Yeah. Despicable. One. Grand jury subpoenas issued in FBI's Russian investigation. Oh, God, I'm so tired of talking about this. This is submitted by Gooder Than Hail to Our World News. I know that they're all so closely related, four of our topics today, but they're all about different things, which is why I kept them all. So, federal prosecutors have issued grand jury subpoenas to associates of former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn, seeking business records as part of the ongoing probe of Russian meddling in last year's election. So, this is them going deeper. Now they're requesting information, business records, transaction records, not just in Michael Flynn, but they're going to be subpoenaing issuing subpoenas for other records as well, digging deep to see who is associated in what ways and who was compromised by the Russians. Shit, anyone can, can issue a subpoena. Well, not anyone. It has to be someone who works for the court. Yeah. I issue subpoenas daily. Congratulations. I issue like eight subpoenas a fucking day. Does that make you feel good? I. It's easy to, to, to turn them away, though. Like, if they don't have a notice... And if they don't have a certificate of service for that date on that notice, and if it's not signed for that date, then you just turn it away. Otherwise, you just sign that bitch, stamp it. Sure. Federal prosecutors, though, have issued it from the grand jury. That is some important shit right there. That's some high-level subpoenas. Yep. So uh, we'll see what happens with that. that. Like, there's not a whole lot else to say. This article is way too long for how little this actually means. Like, oh, yeah. it just means... We're looking into stuff. I, I mean, you can subpoena something all you want, but technically they can still try and, and hide that shit. Yeah. 
it people are just excited that stuff is happening. It just means that if they get caught hiding that shit, they're in even more trouble. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Hopefully, hopefully, like, see, here's the thing, is, like, if if they go through all of this and investigate everything and nothing is wrong, good, fine. Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. Nothing, no yeah. problem with that at all. I know some, I, I know that there are people out there that are like, yeah, fucking get them, prove that they're a bunch of evil lying bastards, and I'm like, I would actually prefer that not be the truth. Yeah, I would rather have them all be telling the truth and them just being scumbags than them to be evil, lying bastards, but are also being scumbags on top of that. Right, it's like, no, you guys are shitbags. Don't, don't get me wrong, you are all fucking shitbags. But I would prefer that you weren't money-grubbing, discount, bullshit, asshole, two-face fuckholes that are also shitbags. On shit top bags. of being shitbags. Exactly. So, I mean, if they do the investigation and everything checks out fine, sweet. At least I know that you guys aren't that fucking fucked up and corrupt. And if you do, well, shit, get the fuck out. Like, exactly. Yeah. Like, th 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 there's basically only positives that come from this. Is either they're not lying and everything's hunky dory, or they are lying and you fucking punish their asses. Both yeah. results are acceptable. There are also people that will not accept those results no matter what they are. And those people are ridiculous. Yeah, they're a little too extremist in my opinion, but I mean... That can't be! They must have bought off the FBI! <laughs> they bought the FBI that, and point, covered it, it all a, up. a giant conspiracy theory. Well, I mean, you can turn everything into a conspiracy theory if you try hard enough. It's true. I've done it. Good job. How you feel about that? Meh. Meh? Yeah. All right. Hey, Nathan. I'm Mr. Meeseeks. Look at me. What'd you care about in the last 24 hours? I got three things, right? I got one thing that's really fucking cool. I got one thing that's very interesting, in my opinion. And there's one thing that's about me. Okay. So we're going to go with the thing that's really fucking cool. What is Vermont it? Vermont lawmakers pass bill to legalize recreational marijuana. Sweet. That's great because it's on the East Coast, yep. which is nowhere near as many legal sh recreational marijuana usage as, as the West Coast. So, it's it's good. I, I, I like it. I'm for it and everything. It's one of those things, we've said this a bit in the, in the past, that it's gonna happen. Like, um, one state at a time, it's gonna happen. Right. It's just taking some time. Uh, the next thing is that in Thailand, um, the the letter five is pronounced ha, right? So in online <laughs> games, in, in online games, a lot of people, instead of going ha, 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 they'll just press five a fuckload of times, and that means you're laughing. I love this. I absolutely I'm, love this. Right? Some people go ha, 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 or ha, 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 with the J's and everything. Some people go he 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 or lol. Some people even uh, some people even go hue hue hue. Br br gonna, br br. Right. Uh, th this is a very interesting thing. Um, Japanese use www because laugh, which is pronounced warai in Japanese. Um, in chat rooms, it, it became easier to just shorten it to w, and then they just kept pressing it as in ha 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 ha. ha you know. Um. The ways we communicate. In Korean, it's k k k k k k k, which comes from one of their symbols, um, which is their equivalent of ha ha ha. Uh, Greek is ha 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 with x a x a x a. Same with Hebrew. Okay. Um, Brazilian Portuguese is hue 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 or r s r s r s. Uh, Danish is ha ha hi hi hey 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 hey, uh, ho ho ti he. <laughs> uh, Russian uh, in Russia, you you type X A, but that's because the Russian symbol that is X is pronounced H, so it's ha 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 ha. Is that the weird French, like triple X, like the the one that? No 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 no. no. That's J, I believe. Okay. Uh, if, if it's just a regular X, it's he. Okay, yeah. Um, and then in French, it's ha ha ha, he he he, he he he, ho ho ho, also MDR. 
which means Mort de Rattery. A- Andrew Walters got fight. got my reference there. What? They're coming to take me away. Ha ha. He he. Ho ho. Ha ha. Oh, okay. I got. I got. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was doing earlier. I'm glad. I'm glad someone got it because it's very obscure. Right. Um. And then the last thing is about myself. Okay, I'm listening. I accidentally. <laughs> stumbled into signing up to be a wedding commissioner on monday (laughs) for some people i have no fucking clue who they are dude okay so similar story in that same vein right so it was when i worked security for the courthouse i'm standing there it's dead no one's in there at all whatsoever and i get this tap on the shoulder from behind me and i turn around and there's this couple there and there's there's this couple and their friend but for a wedding to be validated, you have to have two witnesses. Two witnesses. And yep. so they're like, hey, we really want to get married, but we only brought our best friend. Would you mind being a witness to our wedding that we're going to have take place right here on the ground floor lobby of the courthouse? And I was like, fuck, sure. They're like, all we need you to do is sign your name and take a picture with us. And I was like, I, I, got, I can do that. I got to do that one of like the first month. Uh, that I was working. And Andrew, a wedding commissioner is someone who is legally allowed to marry people. Um, I've done it only once before, and that was in high school, and it wasn't legally a a binding marriage. Um, How did I accidentally do this? This is a great question, Jennifer. Is there like paperwork that has to be filed for this? Yes. And it's a $25 fee. So I'm working, right? And I'm I'm being trained with, uh, with another person. And this guy comes up, and he hands me this paper, and he doesn't say anything. And I look down at the paper, and it says, how to get a wedding commissioner or a marriage commissioner. So I was like, okay, I can do this. And I start typing everything up. I accept this $25 and everything. All I needed was the name of the marriage commissioner. So I ask him who it is, and he goes, oh, I don't know until Monday. And we go, we we can't finish this then because you have to have someone. And he's like, oh, we're, we're not going to know until Monday. Monday is the day that they want to get married. They were just going to pick someone. Well, this, this person's like, I just came in for a marriage license. And I was like, motherfucker, if you came in for a marriage license, you need to go to A, Vital Statistics, and they sent you over here for a, um, a commissioner form. And on top of that, B, you need to fucking say you, what you want instead of handing me a piece of paper. Right? I don't think that's how you phrased it to him, but sure. <laughs> right. I was a little less, you know, angry about it. Um, I also believe a lot of those expletives were left out. So uh, they were they were you know fumbling around trying to figure out who was gonna do it and Patty who I was working with was like hey one of us can do it here and they were like yeah sure who's gonna do it and she turns to me and she goes you want to do it and I was like oh what and she's like all right and she types my name in and everything congratulations sir I'm marrying people are you excited I mean I've married people under Satan this time it's just not under Satan sure. All right. Okay. Anyway, um, uh, mine. Yeah. No, oh, damn it. <coughs> um, so if you don't know who Bill Wirtz is, we actually watched one of his videos on the show about over a year ago. It was Bill a, Burr. It was a really cool video that was the history of Japan. It was like very cheaply done, but very entertaining. Mm-hmm. He made a new one called the History of the World, and it's straight up from like the beginning of existence to today. It's 20 minutes long, it's funny and very informative, and you will take away nothing from it because he moves very quickly and there's not a lot of actual knowledge that you will retain, but you will be entertained for 20 minutes. the Monty Python thing, the history of the world? I don't know. Either way, you should watch this. It's funny, it's good, it's in the show notes, go watch it. Not right now, we have to finish the show, but I wanted to recommend this to everyone else. Also, another thing I cared about that I was talking to Jennifer about about, I don't know, about an hour ago. Uh, a little bit more than an hour. We've been sitting here doing the show for an hour. G- no, guess no, what, Nathan? Thing. Guess what? what? I have not played a video game in over a week. You're fucking crazy. Right? I've, I've been doing nothing but playing Overwatch. This is weird. Normally, you play ass loads of games, and I'm just like, whatever. I'll go watch JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. And yeah, Andrew Walters, you're right. It, it was Mel Brooks, not Monty Python. It was History of the World Part 1. So, yeah, haven't played a game since, I I don't know what the last game I played was, probably Ocarina of Time on the 3DS, but I couldn't tell you when, because- Or Eternal. Uh, no, I've definitely played games since Eternal. (laughs) I have not played Eternal in quite some time. But, yeah, I I just realized it, like, yesterday, I was like, man, 
gotta play a game right now, and I was like, I haven't played a game in a fucking while, and I still haven't played one because I've just been busy. Yeah, it sucks being an adult. I really hate it, and I don't want to do it anymore. I want to go back to being a kid. I so, never thought I'd ever say that. By being an adult. I just want to sit here and listen to my Jet Set Radio Live and play video games. And by being an adult, you mean after we finish the show, you're immediately going to go start playing Overwatch again. I might. I might um, play, play Heroes of the Blues Storm first. to kill yourself. I think I need one or two <laughs> more games on Heroes of the Storm. Ugh, I'm so sorry. And then I have to play another... Uh, five games next week, and then I can finally delete that piece of shit until next time they have. An I was event. like for another month until they have another event going on. Oh, dude, Andrew says he wants to get into Eve Online. That shit's fucking crazy. So here's the thing: the stuff that you hear mm. about Eve Online is crazy. It's I, true. I have played Eve Online, and it is it is a great game to not pay attention to. Do you uh do you know what um or do you know what their their last war on Eve Online was over? Uh, who, who what? Weeaboos. That's great. That's excellent. That's wonderful. They had a Discord uh, chat server that kept getting spammed with a bunch of anime weeb shit, and the other half of the Discord server was like, "Fuck this, guys! If you keep doing this, we're gonna blow up your ships." And they kept doing it. All right. Well then. All right. Anyway, let's get the hell out of here. You ready to go? Yeah, I'm fucking ready to bro. <laughs> Everybody, if you enjoyed the show, please consider supporting us on Patreon, patreon.com slash daily internet. Otherwise, if you'd like to help us just grow and gain some visibility, leave us a five-star review on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, wherever you're listening to this, unless you're listening. Share us on Facebook. Yeah, I mean, five-star reviews drastically boost our visibility when people search for podcasts on their podcatchers, whether it is iTunes, Stitcher, or Google Play. Or you can just share us on social media. And that, I mean, if you you want to get your friends into the show, if you think they'd enjoy it, hell, fucking just send it directly to them. Otherwise, um, just follow us on social media. I read it, Instagram, and Facebook. All of those are at I read it cast. Wait, wait. I, I, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I said I read it, Instagram, and Facebook. Yep. Yep. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, or just let us know what you thought. If there's something that we haven't talked about, even if it's not in the last 24 hours, send it in to us. Let us know what you want us to talk about. Feedback.iredit at gmail.com for email, or you can just call and tell us about it. And that's via our voicemail, which is 508-738-2278. Anything before we go, Nathan? Yeah, I have one thing. What's that? Don't get, get eliminated. eliminated! All right. I love this. This is a great thing. I still need to get those sound bites, but I love that as our exit now. That's that's the best thing ever. All right, everybody. That is your 285th dose of the internet. I am Michael Schwann. And I am Nathan Wood. Have a good day, everyone. Goodbye. Wrong scene. <laughs> There's the logo. <laughs>